In the West, there's an idea that I can have a company that produces nothing, has a ton of patents, but produces money by suing everyone for rights to those patents. You don't even have inventors, you have lawyers making money off of buying intellectual property and trading it. That's weird, right? It's kind of weird that you produce nothing but make a lot of money. The idea that you can take an idea in a world that's this big and say exactly one person owns the right to it globally, like Apple has the right to the phone with rounded rectangles. They're the only people who can produce that. Really? Like, seriously? This is the world we're gonna live in? Like, we just give people monopolies through the IP system for 20 years for stupid ideas because they were first to file. That m made sense back in the day when there were fewer people, less innovators, a less connected world. Now we have like this network of people where like we're empowered to do our things and we can almost trade our creativity. And China's ecosystem is this network ecosystem of an idea for an idea. Like let's let's trade. Now you realize your place in the ecosystem is I need other people around me. You can't be a dick to like all the other guys around you just because you have the patent monopoly in this thing. Someday you're gonna be on the bottom side of the chain and you're gonna need other people's help. And so you build networks of collaborations with people by sharing in this open source philosophy. Uh, oh yeah, we have our first copycat. Uh, well, that's not copycat, let's say it's a fan. So uh, the guy reverse engineer from the video we've seen, uh, published the plan of the uh, of 3D models you can download and print your own one. What we want to do is we want to print it. <laughs> all the hardware companies that come in here, of course, we encourage them to patent all of their technology. But we don't expect them to fight anybody who's copying them. We expect them to be moving much faster than anybody who's copying them and coming up with the next thing the whole time and building a brand. And then eventually those patents may get used when they get into a patent trade-off. That's the use of the patents, not, not, not to stop people copying you. The way to stop people copying you is to make whatever they're copying irrelevant because you've come up with something much better. A huge barrier, I think, to small companies in the United States is like the patent system and the copyrights and just like left and right, just legal challenges and you spend a huge portion of your money on lawyers and IP filings and all that sort of stuff. It, it's a drag. It really is. If you want to be making stuff, you want to be actually working with people and sharing ideas openly and getting things going. Hi, I'm Shane Shen. I like to invent things. This one is called a solo wave. You control speed by you know, the lead. This is my latest invention. It's called a hover tracks. Yeah, the hoverboard story is a very interesting example of somebody in America who came up with the intellectual property and then spent a long time fighting manufacturers who were actually creating something which was similar. That's a great example of a case where I would have encouraged somebody not to start like fighting around IP protection. It's better just to build a brand around a really great product. Make sure that you've got you know, the leading product in the area. This is really the first time we have a, a technology product which become widely popular, which become a cultural icon, but we don't have a name for it. It just emerged. More people come in, evolve it, tweak it, evolve it, tweak it. Eventually, it will get to a form which will go viral. This is kind of point to the future of how things could happen. So in Huaxian Bay, you still find Shanghai, there are basically fakes, there are reproductions of uh, established brands. I'll give you an e example because this is a, a contemporary sort of uh, Shanghai smartwatch running on an Android uh, system. The reproductions were really the items that were sought after by people who could not afford the, the real thing. My understanding is that the early Shanzai were people who worked for the bigger corporations here, like Nokia, Motorola, Foxconn, and they were some very smart engineers who got sick of the management and they're like, look, I can build a phone cheaper, better, faster than these guys can. I understand why they have all this process. I can make it for half the price if we just cut, cut the fat. And they would quit 
talk to their friends who they knew were all those upstream suppliers and they would get together parts and they would build you know what were effectively you know copycat phones the key innovations they're able to do it at much much lower cost just you know learning how to walk before they could run essentially the most similar things to the ideas of Sanzai in the West is the idea of Robin Hood. They try to empower the poor with the latest advancement in technology. Sanzai and the maker movement and the startups, they are very alike. They are very much share the same spirit, even though they are not from big company, they feel powerful. When, you, when they talk about people who left the factories and copied a phone. Well, that was kind of like the open source stuff that wasn't open source. They just sort of like, oh, the schematics are on the desk. I will conveniently help myself to them, make a photocopy, and then leave the factory with them, right? You know, was that stealing or was it open source, right? In, in the West, it's called theft, right? And out here, it's called sharing. This one of the devices that uh, was a haul from the market. And you can see it has uh, a number of markings on it. This one was the, the higher grade version. Uh, it was 70, 80 bucks US. But when you power it on, you see that it's running uh, a very well skinned flavor of Android. Iconography is actually pretty good. And then the great thing is this one sports two SIM cards, replaceable memory card and a replaceable battery. And it comes with two batteries, which is actually a feature that many lo local people really want to have. They're, they're unhappy about A, having no um, memory card slot and B, having not a replaceable battery. The companies were able to access very easily the two basic components that you need to make a phone. One is the Goomban, which is basically a printed circuit board, and the other one is the Goommo, which is basically the shell. So there were companies specializing in making Goomban and Gummo that had slots for those printed circuit boards that were very easily accessible by, by companies. You know, people from the West who are used to sort of month-long development cycles, like, I'm like, how did I do this? This is amazing. Like, this capability came out of nowhere overnight, but actually it's been honed over like a decade or two out of those roots of people, you know, coming out of the big factories and figuring this all out themselves. Shanghai is something that is still going on now, but it is a very small percentage of what is produced uh, in the market. There is a very strong emerging middle class in China that has the purchase power to afford original items that may be more expensive than the reproductions. It is uh, not possible to target uh, new markets just with imitating the established brands. There is a limit to what can be achieved in that sense. Once they kind of got in a position where they could now build a copy of a phone pretty well, they can now start innovating. They'll take like an Android phone and an iPhone and mash them together and come up with this weird thing that is pretty cool and is different in some way. You know, if you go in, in the market in Huaxian Bay, you will find there are many people uh, distributing this type of advertisements for companies that are called white brand companies. They will make it for you assembling very various different components and then you can add your, your own brand, your own name or whatever you want and distribute it as your own item. Yeah, these are, these are all white label ideas. It's an empty sample and all of these are different empty samples so they can go ahead and build it for you on the spot and then order, I don't know, however many you want. And later on, you can actually ask them to go ahead and put your, your graphic on the front, you know, for example, or uh, maybe, you know, these logos over here. In the West, our kind of philosophy is, oh, we come up with something really fantastically new that nobody's done before, become the market leader, and we're really successful. The Chinese mentality is slightly different. They look at something that's already on the market, and then they create a much better version of it much quicker. It's not copying, it's evolution of products, which becomes much better than what was out there before. We grabbed another one on the market there. Looks like a smartwatch, but you'll notice that it only has a single button and the uh, graphics are made for children. So this is a phone plus GPS module that you can use to sort of report a kid's location. If the kid is in trouble, they can dial their parents. You can see it has like SOS call features. I would bet that probably 80 to 90% of the design material in here is borrowed 
from other vendors who use these previously in other smartwatch designs. But people are sharing the IP. The guy who probably shared the IP to them was someone who could sell them chips or motherboards or circuit boards. And so there was some factory backing up that sharing process. They want people to use these things. And that lets these guys try, try, try. Like there's mo many uh, models of this. In fact, when we were buying this, the woman next to us was asking for these and then left it on the table. She said, this one's too thick. Let's go find one that's, that's, that's thinner than this one over here. They probably have less features or less battery life or whatever it is, but the market here can build these different variants and service it because of the, uh, the phenomenal ecosystem. Something is really happening. Companies are realizing the importance of having new ideas and being different. So many companies who were involved in the Shanghai before are now looking at design. They are now looking at how to develop innovation in their own companies. The model that is being developed in Shenzhen can actually be quite threatening in other parts of the world. And it's not uh, surprising that many American companies are now looking at models that are developed in China to see how they can adjust themselves. Dream. 通過自主的原創設計,為客戶提供差異化產品的整體解決方案,打造創新、速度與價值三大核心競爭力。相对于传统的OEM、ODM，我们有什么优势呢？首先，我们有一个产品的产权。像这面展示台上展示的笔记本电脑、平板电脑，就是我们运用OPM这种商业模式打造出来的。So those are some of the product that we make, electronic stuff. This is President Obama wearing my headphone with my business partner Mitch Richmond. Those people has been here, you know, Acon, Wallian, the Justin's picture, my partner Venus Brown. This year is signed by Venus Brown. What I am. I forgot who signed this. There's somebody famous, I forgot. Uh, this is my office. Hi. Hi. And that's something I can't live without is my cigar. Like, I can't do shit without my cigar. Sorry. I just cussed. We are not your traditional like a manufacturer, right? Which is, you know, give me a product to manufacture. You know, we manufacture stuff like a monster and all that. A Harman Kardon, Creative, Altec, Lancy, JBL, all, all the biggest industry. We actually dominate anywhere between like eight to 12% of the US market on our audio side. But what we're doing so different is we, we have our own design house. We're able to create some really cool, incredible product. So here's like a um, design house some inspiration about what we can do. We have like some instruments, 3D printing, rapid prototyping. This team is designing some characters in 3D. This is a game. It's interactive learning. In China, a lot of factories are very traditional. So this is also very um, a new model. The CEO, he tried to, to break this model. And since, uh, since 2005, they are producing now for 45 uh, brands mostly international and mostly in US. 通過這個時光隧道呢,我們就來到了未來2030年的一個智慧之家。首先我們看到的是未來的一個智慧冰箱,並且可以看到冰箱裡內容物的一個營養價值產地生產日期保障食物的安全。同時呢,當冰箱
how many times you roll over, how much sleep, how much rest you have. And then also can read your blood pressure, can kind of tell you if you have any problem need to be identified. And this is technology existing already today, and we've done this almost two years ago. 那么我们的未来洗漱巾，它会根据人脸识别技术识别出我们喜欢哪一类的新闻，并且它还会给我们进行一个个人日程的提醒，以及一个温度的提醒，提醒我们每天应该怎么样穿衣服。We say like 25% of innovation created in Shenzhen are by by the American. They buy it, they go to US, and then they sell it here 100 times more expensive. China feel a little bit bored, I think, about this business model. We made it here, but all the credit is, uh, is for some, somebody else. Ding dong, ding dong. Shenzhen weather. Shenzhen today, daytime to evening. Shen Yu. Temperature 28.8 to 23.8. Ding dong, ding dong. Stop broadcast. Stop. His name is Ding Dong. Everybody is looking for the Chinese startup, made in China. We want the proof to show to the world, like, look, we innovate. We have a lot of opportunity here. I think our focus should be, let's create a quality product. And, and you could be proud and say, this is made in China. So if you can just focus on that new technology to focus on a branding and to focus on the quality, and I think within the next five years, people have different perspective of made in China. I think that will happen. The reason why the city has embraced this notion of new technology is trying to reinvent itself. My concern is that in this reinvention, it wants to very quickly rid of its past. You definitely see like a gentrification happening, and I can't say if it's for better or for worse. We're going to create this innovation and this, you know, the startup world that I've never been seen before.